I heard a fascinating story today. I read a fascinating story today. And it is a very good example of how narrow-minded some people can be when faced with a story that on the face of it seems to be quite inexplicable. And how some people have a tendency of, in the face of such a story, to reach for the supernatural explanation and to blame it all on ghosts or whatever else and blind themselves to a perfectly good and reasonable potential natural explanation for what's going on. The story in question relates to the spooky emails from a dead person. The story goes as follows. A man died a few months ago and a couple of months after his death a few of his friends started receiving emails from the dead guy. Now they're pretty sure that nobody has any access to the email to the dead man's email account. Also some of the things that are referred to in the emails are things that only the dead man and the person he sent the email about to know about. And that's fascinating. How could this possibly happen? The example that the story that is related in the link, I'll put it in the video description, is about how the dead man and the surviving man went up into the attic of the surviving man and the dead man saw that the attic was a little bit of a mess and he joked about how the attic needs to be cleaned. The email that the surviving man received a few months after the dead man's death referred to this conversation that only the two of them knew about. It said that he'd be watching him and that he should better get his ass in here and clear out his attic. Something of that nature. So how can this be explained without referring to something supernatural? And if it is clear that nobody has hacked the dead man's account. Well, to see how this could possibly happen, let's look at a similar situation for which I know there is a perfectly good natural explanation. And that's my wife's phone account, mobile phone account. You see, my wife was rather attached to her old mobile phone. And even though it had become a rather rickety old thing that kept cutting out and kept falling over and from which she could either, neither receive or send text messages anymore, she was very reluctant to move across to a new phone that we actually had that would have been perfectly suitable for the job because she was too attached to how the old phone worked. And this dragged on for a couple of months. Eventually she bit the bullet and we transferred the SIM card across to the new phone. Now, imagine what happens when you're sending and receiving text messages from your phone. You see, you send a text message and your phone handshakes with a server owned by your phone company. The message is sent to that server, the two machines interact with each other until your phone knows that the server has received the message and as far as your phone is concerned that's it done. In the meantime the server takes responsibility for passing the message on to the receiving phone and that phone might be switched off or whatever else so when the phone is switched on those two phones the phone and the server start handshaking and the message is passed on until the server is happy that the phone has received a message. Now one of the phones, my wife's phone, is knackered. It's not working properly. So messages that are being sent to her phone get queued on the server and the server starts realizing that the phone that is supposed to receive the messages has become knackered and unresponsive. So it stops trying Eventually, a flag is put on the account and it is flagged as being unresponsive. 
don't keep trying. Don't keep trying to waste bandwidth trying to send messages to this phone. Try every now and again. So what happened to my wife was that after a week or so, a week or two, on the new phone, suddenly the thing went berserk. And it started pinging every few seconds with another message popping in. And these were messages dating back weeks, if not months, during which your old phone had become unresponsive. The, the server couldn't send messages to it. They had become queued up, they had become waterlogged, so to speak. And they were just sitting there, stewing. After two weeks, a routine check was done. Suddenly, the server realized that there was now a responsive phone on the other hand, and suddenly everything that had gotten backlogged got passed on to, this, to the new phone. So back to my ghost story. You can imagine how something similar could have happened. Maybe his mail account had gotten knackered. The mail account of the dead guy had gotten knackered. So he was sending emails, but the server had gotten its knickers in a twist on his account. Something was preventing the messages from actually being sent on. So they were sitting there, queued and ready to go, but due to some technical issue, being prevented from actually being sent. And this situation could persist for weeks and weeks, if not months. And then maybe one day, a couple of months down the line, a bit of routine maintenance was done on that server. Maybe the server was rebooted. Maybe a upgrade of the server software was put in place, completely unrelated to this dead guy. But as a result of whatever was done on the server, suddenly the situation resolved itself. And there were all these queued email messages that just happened to relate to things that happened a week or two before his death. That just happened to relate to him visiting your man's attic and seeing that it needed to be cleaned up. The joke he sent in response to having visited the guy's attic earlier that day. That had been sitting there for a couple of months, sitting on that server, not being processed at all, until the server was rebooted or updated or whatever else was applied to the server that finally resolved the situation. Now again, is this a likely situation? I would imagine so. There are always problems with email servers. There are always scheduled maintenance situations going on every now and again. So that's not a far-fetched situation and it is perfectly natural. So why grab, why reach for the supernatural explanation? Why assume that there have been ghosts involved in this thing when there's a perfectly good natural explanation? Now think to yourself, who is being more close-minded here? The person who looks for this natural explanation or the person who hears the story, can't come up with an immediate explanation themselves, concludes that it has to be supernatural, a supernatural phenomenon, and then closes their mind to any alternative hypotheses that is presented. Thank you.